This episode is brought to you by Experian. Are you paying for subscriptions you don't use, but can't find the time or energy to cancel them? Experian could cancel unwanted subscriptions for you, saving you an average of $270 per year and plenty of time. Download the Experian app. Results will vary. Not all subscriptions are eligible. Savings are not guaranteed. Paid membership with connected payment account required. Today on an all-new Dr. Phil. Some of today's young people expect everything to be handed to them. All you want is a Lamborghini, plenty of money, but you say you don't think you should have to give 100%. Why? I... Uh... And some parents don't see this as a problem. He's a smart kid. He's gonna get it. He's getting it now. He's milking you like a cow. We're going to show Generation Me how to stand on their own two feet. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. I know things are tough out there, but we can do this. If it matters to you, that's what I want to talk about. Ten seconds to air. Love me. Well, thank you. This is gonna be a changing day in your life. This ready camera five. Three, three, take ten. I'm late for work because my mother didn't wake me up. I can't go to college because my parents couldn't buy me a new car. To a professor, I need to retake the test because I was out late last night drinking. Okay, everybody sit down. Those were actual statements made by a bunch of 20-something who experts say are a generation of self-absorbed, spoiled, impatient, and entitled brats. They even have a name, Gen Me, Generation Me, as in it's all about me. Now, whether you're currently raising one or, you, or you, maybe you are one yourself, listen to this. Experts say that this group is also depressed, aggressive, and the most overwhelmed of any generation to date. Now, we gathered some folks who can relate. This is 18-year-old Courtney. Now, you say you want several houses and your own island. Yes. <laughs> this is 24-year-old Bradley. Now, all you want is a Lamborghini, plenty of money, but you say you don't think you should have to give 100%. Why? I feel that my 80% is worth somebody else's 100%, I guess. Oh, I see. <laughs> All right. Let's also meet Kim Stoltz. Now, Kim is MTV news anchor and correspondent. She's part of the Gen Me, but doesn't relate to the lax work ethic. Now, you actually got started on television, right, on a reality show? I did, I did. America's Next Top Model? That's correct. Okay, and, <laughs> but you don't agree with this just give it to me business? No, I don't. I mean, I, I, I did start on a reality television show, but I worked very hard um, before that point in my life. Actually ended up on the show because I lost a bet with a friend. Um, and, and being on, on camera hasn't necessarily been a dream of mine, but although I do love it very much, but it's more what you're doing in, in front of the camera and it's substantive work that sort of gets you there and, and gets you to be a little bit more um, knowledgeable of the things you're talking about. Like you about. would love that, right? Courtney, you'd love to like be famous and yeah. be on TV. Yeah, that'd be so cool. To you'd me. love to switch chairs with her, right? You'd oh, be holding the mind. microphone, yeah, no, I mind at and all. you'd be talking about somebody else. You think that'd be cool? Yeah. All right. Do you want to be famous or just rich? I uh, just rich. Just rich. Yeah. You just want the Lamborghini and stuff. All right. Yeah. Let me introduce you to Jean Twangy. Now she's a college professor, and she's the one that actually got us talking uh, about this topic. I actually was reading your book. I picked it up, was reading your book, so I wrote a blog about this, and everybody just blew up. I got so many responses, and then people started sending me tweets about this thing. Uh, you wrote Generation Me. You've written another book. What's your second book? The Nar Narcissism Epidemic. Narcissism Epidemic. These things are related, right? Yes. Yeah, they're, they're definitely good. You think that we do have an entitled generation, true? Yeah. Um, young people describe themselves as wanting to be rich and famous, as uh, wanting all of the toys but not wanting to work for them, uh, being more self-centered. Even when I talk to young people in person, they say, yeah, our generation is narcissistic. You got us. So. All right, and what are you saving this other 20% for, by the way? Uh, the right opportunity? Uh, yeah. uh, I don't really know what I'm saving it for. I don't think I'm really uh, saving it. I think uh, my 80% compared to a lot of people that I've met and have dealt with in work-related environments is far beyond their 100 
Who knows? So you're just smarter than most of the rest of us. I, I guess that's the old <laughs> narcissist. No, I, thing. no I'm no. just being honest. I mean, no. you, you got to be honest. If yeah. that's what you think, I then that's what you so, should yes. say. I have a lot more common sense than the uh, average person. You have more common sense? Yes. But at the same time... <laughs> Okay, you're on the Dr. Phil show. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Telling that's people true. that you shouldn't have to work real hard because you're smarter than everybody else and you think you have common sense? Yeah, I guess. So it's you're 24? Really yeah. Are you going to college? No. Did you go to college? A little bit. A little I, bit? I dropped out as usual for the uh, whole... I just felt like it was a uh, big high school. I didn't really feel like I was getting anything from it. It was more along the PowerPoints and... They're giving me all the answers right before the actual quiz, you know what I mean? Like, people who were sitting there that would not come to class all week whatsoever, they would show up on that very given day. And so it was beneath you? Yeah, I felt like, yeah, I felt like I was above it, I guess. I just well, yeah. wanted a little, no, it's, I know you need to go to school to, uh... Apparently you don't. To <laughs> grasp the jobs that you're looking for, but at the same time, I'm still okay with being uh, mediocre. Well, where's your mom? Right here. right here. Okay, Christine, so... Do you pay his rent or does he pay it? Um, I pay his rent occasionally. Yeah, yes, I pay, do. I help who him. Who paid it this month? Um, we both did. <laughs> oh, so he chipped in? He chipped in, yeah. I put in my 100 bucks. <laughs> did you, was, was that 80%? 80 dollars? <sighs> no, not even close. It was 80 dollars. No. Wasn't even close? <laughs> no. All right, now MTV correspondent Kim Soles recently hit the streets of New York City to find out how Jen Mears feel about the label being called Jen Me. Take a look. This is New York, a city of more than 8 million people, and a great place to see what Generation Me is saying about success, entitlement, and getting ahead. So how do you feel about the label, Generation Me? I think it's pretty accurate. It sounds a little self-centered. Do you think our, me. our generation is lazy in a way? Yeah, things are a little bit different than the older generations, but I think that's what makes us more special. It is all about me doing better, me having a great career. Something like Facebook, it's all about me. Look at my life. I'm going to tell you in 140 characters or less on Twitter what I'm doing, and you really want to know about it. Kim, you've talked to a lot of these people out there. What is it now? about this generation? Is it the internet? Is it all the reality shows where everybody says they ought to have their own show and they ought to be famous? I mean, you, you hear that a lot. Right, I mean, to me, you know, when I was on America's Next Top Model, I remember one of the girls on the show, you know, they asked, what do you want to be when you grow up? And she said, I just want to be a household legend. And I turned to her and I said, well, but what do you want to do? And she's like, I want to be a household name. I want to be a legend. I want to be this new, Word, a phrase, a phrase I've created called household legend. It doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, but that's why she's not that, probably. Um, but, I mean, she, you know, this is this sort of mentality that a lot of people in, in my generation have, which is I deserve my own reality TV show because I have a personality. But, I mean, how many people in this room think they have a personality? That's, that's a lot of people. There aren't that many networks to uh, support that many reality TV shows. So you have to work to get it. You have to bring out you know, something different and be smart enough to know what's going to get you on screen, which is, I mean, I'd like to say, which is what I did and worked hard afterwards to make sure I was successful afterwards. But, Gene, you say these people want this, but that this is the most depressed, anxious, frustrated generation, of the less satisfied generation of all, true? Perhaps because they can't all be famous and rich, and once reality starts to intrude into the fantasy, there's a lot of disappointment. Yeah, we gotta take a break for a second. When we come back, I'm gonna talk to you and your mother because she's done something in the first part of this show that I think is really interesting. And I've got a hard question for her when we come back. These young people weren't the only ones who wanted to share their opinions. Other Gen Mears flocked to their webcams and video cameras, the mediums they're most comfortable with, to weigh in as well. By the time I'm 30, I hope to make over 50000 I plan to be able to retire, hopefully, by 30, you know, maybe 40, max. If you believe in yourself, you can do anything, but you can't. They teach you that phrase, and it's not true. So, thanks a lot, parents.
Monday on an all new Dr. Phil. Infidelity exposed. I can actually love a woman, have sex with another woman, and not lose any love for this girl. The heated debate continues. That way of thinking works for later adolescents and early 20s, but not somebody that's in their 40s. I think you're a very angry person, which is not attractive. They're not angry, they're disgusted with you. How to convince an affair. Do you know who we don't cheat on? And preserve your marriage. I'm glad you're hearing this. That's Monday. How important do you think being famous is to our generation? It's pretty important, unfortunately. And fame is too easily received nowadays, I feel, where you're put on a reality show and that's how you're made famous. Do you think Twitter, Facebook, YouTube um, is helping people get famous? Yeah, some people. Do you think there's anything wrong with wanting to be famous? No. If it's your dream, if you're happy, like reality television shows, things like that, I think it's like a, an easy way to get famous. And it's not, I can't really judge anyone because, you know, it worked for them. Yeah, you heard them all right. I'm trying to get inside the minds of Generation Me. Now look, these aren't bad eggs. I mean, clearly, these are bright-eyed, bushy-tailed young folks. One in six people believe that they'll actually become famous and get rich without skills or qualifications. One in six people. I guess if everybody's famous, then I guess nobody's famous. Uh, we're here with 18-year-old Courtney. She says she wants to have her own TV show in five years. We're also here with 24-year-old Bradley. He wants to have his own business in a year. Now, you, you went to college, but yeah. you said it was beneath you. It was just a bunch of rote memory stuff. I felt it like that at the time, yes, and I also feel uh, it's either what you know or who you know. If you rub elbows with the, with the right people, you can find yourself in a better job. You're working than... for your ex-girlfriend's mother. No, yeah, at the, for the certain time. Is yes, that who you're rubbing elbows time. with? And, yeah, we're rubbing elbows. We're pretty cool. Do you cover for work. him? A lot. Do you make this possible? Do I make what possible? Are you enabling him? I do. Do you make it possible for him to be less than everything he can be? I don't want to believe so, but I believe I do, yeah. I, I mean, I don't... I believe that I do, but I don't want to do that. You wish that wasn't true, I but wish it that is. wasn't true. Because I asked you during the show, I said, do you have to pay his rent? You said, well, sometimes, sort of, maybe, kind of. You were covering for him right now. Because you thought, he, Dr. Phil's asking him hard questions. He's picking on my baby. Gotta protect I, him. I gotta protect him. Because here's what you wrote me in a letter. <laughs> you said, I was watching your show today. It was right up my alley. I actually called my 24-year-old son and told him to watch. What time do I come on? You come on at 3 o'clock. And he was home to watch that? Um, he might have been at work. He might have been home. I didn't know. Oh, so you could watch it at work? Yeah. Can't That's a good job. Okay. <laughs> Ironically enough, you said, and I quote, earlier today, my son texted me to let me know that he didn't have his rent money again. You put in parentheses. Mind you, he has only lived there two months <laughs> after leaving his girlfriend's parents' house. He's 24, never held a job for longer than three months. The only job he kept longer was working for his girlfriend's mom. He mooches off everyone, has a sense of entitlement, always asked to borrow money, never really had a place to call his wow. own. I'm paying his 675 rent. He eats in fine restaurants, hangs out in club, enjoys his life. My 67-year-old mother and I cannot and will not do this anymore. And I ask you, is he paying his own rent? Well, sort of, kind of, maybe. Now, which is true? You telling me the truth here, or are you telling me the truth when you're covering for him and enabling here? I forgot about that letter I wrote you. Um, yeah. That, that, that was the truth. That, that was the truth. Okay. But what I have found is that I have still continued to help him in ways that... Um, but are you helping him? And, Gene, this is the whole point. Is this... a I, what do you think of, I always say, and I actually put this quote in my book, somebody smarter than me said this, I don't remember who it was, but they said, the older generation talks about the younger generation as though they had nothing to do with it. And it's awful easy for us to, oh, these kids today, nobody wants to work, they expect everything on a silver platter. We made them that, you weren't born with this value system, were you? <laughs> I don't know where I built that up from, but it obviously came from somewhere. You picked it up somewhere. You decided you were smarter than everybody else, even though you can't pay your own rent. Yeah. So he doesn't pay his own rent, but you're paying for him to eat in fancy restaurants and hang out in clubs? Now tell me, 
What's I'm not wrong paying with for that? him to do that. He's paying for him to do that. That's why I'm paying his rent. <laughs> See, and here's the. Yes, I understand that. I understand that. But I don't think I'm you not do. saying I didn't have anything to do with this. What I'm saying is, where is the point where I'm done helping and I'm enabling now? Where so, is the point? You I'm past it. the point. I understand that. You're, th you're here. This is it. This is the point. This is the time to turn. Gene, help me out here. What, but if I feel like I had yeah. no, no involvement in how he got this way, I wouldn't be helping him or enabling him. But at some point, you have to cut your losses and say, you're on your own, become an adult. Here's my advice, but no more money. Yeah, am I the only one that gets this? Help me here. Monica, you know her. I do know her. Because she's your daughter. She's my daughter. So That's talk right. to me here. Well, and I, I understand where everybody is coming from, but on Christine's behalf, I'd like to say that as a mother, sometimes we just, we know that maybe what we're doing isn't helpful, but it's the mother in us that just wants to protect our babies. Okay, but let me say this. Hang on, Kim. Let me say this. Here's, here's the deal, and I want everybody to get this. When you do what you do, you're doing it to make you feel better in the moment. You feel guilty or you, like I haven't been a good enough mother. I haven't been there for them. I work, so I don't have to be there. I feel sorry for them. It's tough. It's hard. You do it because it makes you feel better. You said, so you help your kids. It's not helping her. It's not helping him if you allow him to get by with this. Because here's what happens. Pretty soon they leave you and they go out to people who couldn't give a damn less how cute and cuddly they are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They don't, he is the most precious young man you have ever seen, isn't he? Yes, he is. Isn't he just the <laughs> cutest thing you've ever seen? And he's a good and person. And he is so sweet. But when he gets out in a dog-eat-dog -dog world, if he has been pampered like that, they will eat his sack lunch. We'll be right back. <laughs> Across this great country, from coast to coast, you've told me about the crossroads we're facing. That's exactly why I wrote, We've Got Issues, How You Can Stand Strong for America's Soul and Sanity. This book isn't just a conversation starter. It's a roadmap for standing strong in the face of adversity, for embracing our core values when they're needed most. We're talking about real strategies for real people dealing with real issues from navigating the complexities of today's polarized world to fortifying our families. And I set forth in the book 10 principles that I think are critical for a healthy society. This is not about politics. I'm not a politician, don't want to be a politician, don't know enough about politics to talk about it. But I talk about every angle of life as we know it, from family and relationships to the burning issues that are shaping our world today. We've got issues. How you can stand strong for America's soul and sanity and you'll find it anywhere books are sold. It's about time we start addressing what truly matters. You think that our generation is spoiled? Yeah. What, what makes them spoiled? Their parents. What do their parents do? Buy them stuff. Give they, them money. Give they, them whatever they want. I was an only kid, so every you know everything was all about me. Do you feel like you can be anything you want to be? I think so. I think that a lot of people, a lot of my friends will be like, I can be whatever I want to be because I deserve that or just because that's the way the world is. Kids these days are just handed things and a lot of people just don't have to work for it. Instead, they just have mommy and daddy pay for everything. A lot of people I know sort of had this false promise of, of entitlement and feeling, you know, like they were gonna be able to get their dream job or, or make a lot of money right off the bat. I mean, who's telling us this? Parents possibly with hopes for their children, but that's how our society is. My mom definitely made me seem like I could be anything that I wanted to be. Well, what happens when the recession hits and all of a sudden you find out maybe you can't get the dream job or be anything you wanted to be? Life sucks after that. <laughs> well, that was Kim, MTV correspondent Kim Stoltz. Have you ever noticed that she seems to get like 10 to 1 guys willing to talk to her instead of <laughs> girls? Gee, I, I wonder why. <laughs> All right, we're talking about Generation Me, which is a really interesting book that was written by Gene Twangy, and it is worth reading, I promise you. It's not about making you feel bad. It's just about putting something on your radar so you understand what the challenges are. 
Now, I, I've said that adults talk about this younger generation like we got nothing to do with it, but we do have something to do with it. Jackie, you do a lot of work uh, in HR. Yes, I do. What do you hear from, this, from these young people that are coming in looking for jobs now? I, I get the sense that they kind of want to start at the top, but what do, you, what do you see? Well, first of all, I'd like to say the students at UCLA are some of the brightest and the best, but um, I've been there for 12 years, and when they come in, um, First of all, they'll, they want the most popular jobs. They want to work in the coffee house or in the store. And then once they get the jobs, they realize that, oh, do I have to work? They'd rather be there to socialize and talk with their friends and, and uh, more of a socialization as opposed to going and actually doing the work. Uh, now, Gina Newton teaches 10th to 12th grade uh, at a high school in California. Is it different? I mean, are, are you seeing a, a shift in, in kids being less responsible? I'm not seeing a shift in the sense that it, it's just there. And this doesn't apply to all the kids, but there's definitely a, a sense of entitlement that's there. There's excuses that are forever across the board. And I have to say to the parents here, you don't make our jobs much easier. For those of you who are enabling the students, because then we're undermined in what it is that we're trying to do. Because yeah. they want everything and they can't have it here's my concern you're 24 right yeah. okay so at some point you are are going to either be unable or unwilling to support him right Correct. in whole or part Correct. so it's it's going to be competition right i'm not afraid of work i love working i'd much rather be occupying my time making money than sitting on my butt not doing anything, right. you know, watching the same TV shows every day. I have a very big problem with saving that money, I guess. And I think, yeah, she's made it a little easy going back and forth, like, when I need help, you know what I mean, or if I need all of it, I just, yeah, she's made it pretty I, cushiony to I completely relate that. to that. I think, I think everyone in our generation relates to that. I think we've got a major instant gratification problem. I mean, I'm like you, I work, I, I work every week, and I make the money, and I spend it. Um, and I have that problem as well. It's something I definitely need to work on. I think part of what's to blame is this Twitter, Facebook, uh, YouTube. I mean, I'm addicted to this as much as anyone. Those things are all about getting what you have to say out there in a minute, all the time. You want to find something out about someone on Facebook, you can do it at that moment. You want to find out the news, you can get it on the internet. I think we've all gotten a little bit too used to getting what we want, when we want it, having that instant gratification constantly in our lives. And I think we've all forgotten about the long term a little bit. It looks to me like we've got a crash of cultures here. Because we've got a bunch of kids that say, okay, I want the good things. I'm not saying you shouldn't. I'm glad that you do. But you've got to be willing to figure out how to get there. And my, my whole point is, like, right now, the economy is going down. Parents are less able to give kids everything they want. Kids want more. Parents are able to give less. So what's going to happen? I mean, it, it, maybe that's why we're getting the depression, the frustration, the anxiety. So... All right, so we've got to talk about what parents are doing to shape their kids into this thinking, and we're going to talk about some do's and don'ts from the book Generation Me. We'll be right back. He's 24. That's why we're here. This, this, is, this, is, this is why we're here, because I feel scared. I feel scared for him. I feel scared for me. How much money do you hope to be making by the time you're 30? Six figures would be nice. Well, I've been tooling for four years <laughs> and I'm still not making a hundred grand. I talked to my dad about this. He was shocked that I felt that way. After all, he'd been working for 35 years to earn a hundred grand. It's not as politically important for our generation to get involved because it doesn't directly affect us. Really? You know, I mean, you don't think the recession and maybe the war in Iraq, no. the war in Afghanistan is enough? Yeah, but it almost seems like anything that we do is futile. When do you think adulthood starts? When you want it to start. <laughs> and when is that for you? I'm um, Peter Pan. I'm staying out <laughs> forever. Stop wasting time scrolling through endless clickbait, social media, and emails trying to keep up with the news. Instead, listen to all the news you need in just 10 minutes. Welcome, welcome to The Newsworthy. The Newsworthy podcast makes it faster, easier, and more enjoyable to get unbiased news on the go. It helps us navigate the news without feeling overwhelmed. Even when my time is limited. So much 
detail and information in 10 minutes. Listen now by searching The Newsworthy in your podcast app or go to thenewsworthy.com. Well, experts say there's a whole new group of young people called Generation Me who are overly confident, they're self-entitled, and why should you care? Well, they're the ones leaving the job early and sticking you with the work because they have to go to Vegas, so they have to go get their hair done, to go to a friend's house, to go out to a club tonight. They're the ones who tell you with attitude that they just can't make copies because they are late for a date. Now, Christine is Bradley's mom, and we've been talking about this a, a little bit. Uh, Monica is, is Courtney's mother. You two agree that you got a little of the Generation Me mindset in you. Would you agree with that? Fully. Okay. And what are you going to do if all of a sudden you call her and she says, nope, can't help you? Uh, I don't really know. Pardon me? I don't really know. You don't know? How do you feel about that? He's 24. I, that's why we're here. This, this, is, this, is, this is why we're here, because I feel scared. I feel scared for him. I feel scared for me. Because if I continue to help him, and he's not the only child that I help, but if I continue to help him, I am putting myself at great risk of becoming so far in debt that I'm going to have a really hard time getting out. We're not getting any younger. No. The day's no. going to come when we are gonzo, right? <laughs> yeah. So what's going to happen to him then? I said he's a smart kid. He's gonna get it, and he's getting it now. Like he's milking and... you like a cow. Yeah, I know. <laughs> what are you getting out of being here so far? What I'm getting out of being here is that I'm learning and I'm listening and I'm knowing that. What are even you learning and feel, listening? Even though I feel that, and at the time when I'm giving him the money, that I feel as though it's the right thing to do for me. Maybe it's only making me feel better. I never thought about that. It's making I you feel better in that. the moment. Don't but you I never thought about but that. But don't you when you do? Yes, I do. Because you're the hero. You're the superwoman mom. You're coming in and say, okay, I'll help you. And there he you gives you a big hug, doesn't he? Thanks, mom. Not all the time. I mean, but no, he's appreciative, right? <laughs> yes. But he's appreciative. For and the so, moment. And so in the moment, he's happy. Yes. He and came that makes over me happy. and he had a problem and you solved it for him. And he goes home happy, and you're just all warm inside. Yeah, and it makes me happy. And you've just crippled him. See, and I... Just as, you, you couldn't cripple him anymore if you hit him in the knee with a baseball bat. Because <laughs> you're not teaching him to stand on his own. And eventually, you're not going to be able to do it anymore, and he isn't going to have learned how. You need to get off your dead ass and start working, boy. <laughs> You've got a job. I, I get that. You've got a job, but you need to get you need to get on up. And and what you should do, like, let me just tell you, you should probably do something in sales. Seriously, very charismatic. because you know you are you're very you're handsome kid. You, you're you have a nice gift for gab, and I'm not being sarcastic. I'm I'm telling you very seriously. You got to match your skills. You don't have education or a particular skill set, correct? But what you have is a really good personality. Mm -hmm. You're obviously very intelligent. You're very personable. You should get into sales. You can make a fortune in sales, whether it's as a, a stockbroker or selling goods or services, whatever. You could make a ton of money in sales. That's what you need to do. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to take a break. Monica says Courtney gets upset when she doesn't get her way. <laughs> Mom says it's just easier to give in. We'll talk to her when we come back. Monday on an all-new Dr. Phil. Infidelity exposed. I can actually love a woman, have sex with another woman, and not lose any love for this girl. Prevent an affair and preserve your marriage. I'm glad you're hearing this. That's Monday. Closed captioning provided by... If you would like to purchase a tape or transcripts of your favorite Dr. Phil show, please log on to drphil.com or call 866-4-DR-PHIL. That's 866-437-7445. 866-437-7445. Well, we're talking about what some experts are calling the most controversial generation today, Generation Me. And look, this isn't anything new. I mean, I, I, I honestly, I can remember my dad saying, you kids just don't want to work. 
You know, and I'm sure his dad said the same thing to him. But it seems like we've kind of reached a point of critical mass where kids are playing video games instead of games. They're texting each other instead of even developing relationship skills. They're sitting home entertaining themselves on the web instead of getting out in the world and making their way. So we've got to figure out how to get these kids a wake-up call before they hit a wall and find out they can't make it in a world that's getting more and more expensive to live in. Now, you, you've been sitting here watching this. Yes, uh-huh. So what are, you, what are you taking away from my conversation with these two? Well, we have a little bit of an advantage that Courtney's a lot younger than Bradley, but I'm looking at, at her at 18 thinking that, ooh, at 24, that's coming quickly. And she could be just like Bradley and doesn't have skills, doesn't have the education. She's still in high school. And, and I, my dream for her is to be able to, at 24, have her own place or have her TV show if, she, if that's what she wants. But what I don't think she understands is that that's not just going to happen. You've got to A, finish high school, B, probably go to college. She wants to do something with animals. She'd like to um, be a hostess on an Animal Planet show. She needs a science background. She needs, she needs some background here. And I don't see her doing anything to get that. You want to be on an Animal Planet show? Yes. Yeah. Why? Because, well, I love animals. And, like, I love, like, like seeing, like, on, like, the shows that they're on, how they can, like, go out and they can, like, get in and get down and dirty and just, I don't know. And they're also, like, learning. I love to, like, learn, you know? I just like, I like knowing stuff, so. But you want to do it on TV. Yeah. Why? Because I think that that'll, I don't know, it's going to be fun, I guess. Like, yeah. it'd be, I don't know. I really haven't thought of it like that. Like, why would it be on TV? I guess just because. Because you, you understand when you watch that 30-minute Animal Planet show. Yeah. That, that doesn't really take 30 minutes. Oh, yeah, no, I know. I'm not I mean, they're, like they're, out, they're out there, like, for a week trying yeah. to find a wombat that won't bite them. Yeah, no, I know, no, I totally, I totally know. You, like, you get that. Yeah. And this show, we're, we're here for an hour. You know, I have 350 people on the staff here mm -hmm. that work around the clock in order to make this hour happen. They interviewed yeah. you, they interviewed you, they interviewed you guys, they interviewed you kids out there. Uh, you know, it, there's a, it, it's a lot of work. It's not. Well, yeah, I realize that, like, I'm not going to be able to just be, like, sitting at home and someone's going to be, like, from Animal Planet's going to be like, oh, hey, you want a TV show? Like, I realize that I'm going to have to, you know, like, get involved with, the corporation somehow. Do you want at 24, where Bradley is, to be calling your mother for rent money? No, definitely not. No. So you, would you, <laughs> what would you think if you were dating him and you found out his mother was having to pay his rent? I mean, that you're calling your mom. <laughs> <laughs> this was like. I mean. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um. I'm just saying. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. I'm, I'm just saying. You, oh, you don't like it. I, I have nothing to hide, but at the same time, yeah. It, it's, you it's don't a like amusing. it. You, know, you want to no. be. Oh, yeah. No, I, yeah, I wish I could be making, you know what I mean, that quadruple what I'm making now and be able to pay for her rent. You know but I mean? you can. That's yeah. the whole point. You really can if you're willing to put in the work to do it. And, you know, one of the things, um, and, Gene, I, I thought you pointed out some, some great things uh, in the book when you were saying that, one of the things that parents say that they just shouldn't say is just the you're special yes. sort of thing. Uh, tell me why that's objectionable. Well, special means not just different, but better than everyone else. And I think some parents mean you're special to me. What they actually really mean is I love you. And you should probably just say that instead. That's probably what you really mean. And then you're not comparing your child to someone else. And special, that's entitlement, special treatment. Yeah, and, and, you know, that sounds like semantics, but it is not semantics at all because the truth is it sends a message that makes the kid think, well, I'm special, so I don't have to do anything. Exactly, and that's the problem. And you see this disconnect with f so much fantasy, very little reality, and eventually reality is going to have to intrude. The greatest gift you can give a child is to put them in a situation where they observe themselves mastering their environment, where they say, wow, I did that. I, I, just like I watched someone else do something, I watched myself manage that money. I watched myself make it. I watched myself manage it. I watched myself spend it. And here I stand totally self-sufficient today, and I am proud of that. That is the greatest gift you can give him. And I think I've been taking that from him for a long time. 
I don't want to do that anymore. Then you've got to stop. It is a choice. It's just that simple. I mean, I, you can go to six months of psychotherapy or you can just hear me tell you quit. Okay. <laughs> quit doing it. All right, coming up, should your children get a trophy even if they don't win? I mean, really, does every kid need a trophy? We'll answer that when we come back. DrPhil.com, brought to you in part by... Simply Beautiful, the Infinity Cord Keeper by Conair Dryer sends the cord right back into the handle. More volume, more shine, and salon results at home. Infinity by Conair. Travel consideration provided by... If you have high blood pressure like me, you need powerful cold medicine with a heart. Coracetin HBP for cold and flu won't raise your blood pressure. Coracetin HBP. If you want to be in the audience, call 323-461-7445 or email us at drphil.com. All right, you've all heard it say that kids today just don't want to work. You've heard it called Generation Me, Gen Y, a lot of different things. But the question is, what makes a child, maybe your child, maybe not, grow up and be unable to work hard and achieve their goals? Now, we're talking about this today, and clearly it exists. Not with everybody. I, you know, no question, it's not with everybody. There are hardworking kids, and then there are those who are kind of sitting back waiting for it to be delivered. But the problem is, life ain't the pizza man. It doesn't deliver. If you want it, you've got to go out and get it. And that's what we've been talking about. And necessity is a mother of invention. They have to do it, they'll do it. Now, Karen, stand up. Uh, it, it's Corinne? Yeah. Okay. Well, we got, if you're going to be famous, we've got to get your name right. Well, thank you, Corinne. Now, you said that you feel entitled because you know you're talented. Right, and I think that... You're just frustrated that others don't see it. <laughs> right. You have to give off this air of success before you're successful. Like, they're like, don't become a waitress at the comedy club. Be don't take a menial job, because they'll think of you as a waitress. They won't think of you as a comedy. Do you comic. have a job? No. <laughs> so I how do you do live? Comedy. How do you live? Well, I just got married to a kind of successful man. But that's not, I'm not like. <laughs> uh, okay, so you got. I do you, the YouTube thing. I'm, I'm putting myself out there um, and using all of these things that, that the other generations have made it almost like a necessity for us to be able to make it in the industry that we want to make it in. And who do we look up to? We look in, up to the people in the entertainment industry and, you know, professional uh, football players and these are the, and, and, and reality stars and But these you are... look up to people in the entertainment world. I do, yes, and I think that it was the generation before mine that made me feel that way. And um, I have a degree, I, I have a teaching degree, and I have an interview tomorrow to teach, but I don't want to teach, I want to do comedy. Because <laughs> you want to be famous. I want to, I want to be wealthy. Because you said but... <laughs> that you want to be able to have more money to buy shoes. Right, I love shoes. <laughs> I'm very addicted to Manolo Blahniks. I feel so much better about our future now. <laughs> okay, now, David, stand up. You, you, you say you're famous in your world. Infamous, yeah. How's right. that? Well, I run businesses. I'm 23 years old. I, I graduated high school. I did what I can to work at 16 years old. My, my family's middle class, I would do anything I could to reach beyond my means, not because I feel like I'm entitled to it, but because that's what I want for myself as a person, as a man. I want to be able to provide for my family, for my friends. Well, how are you famous? Infamous. How are you infamous? Well, if you lived in Northridge, you would know me. <laughs> Why are you infamous? Are you like, do you rob houses in Northridge or something? No, I, I'm actually attempting to become a humanitarian, and with my businesses, I tend to contribute a percentage of my profits to charities across the country and the world, for that matter. So I would never try to think for myself or try to mooch off of anybody around me. I would do everything I could to reach for myself. Obviously, growing up in a somewhat middle class, I guess you could say, it's easy to fall into that entitlement category because your parents are working all the time. They say, you can be what you want to be. Just go out and reach for it. Now, whether or not you want to be a slacker sitting at home playing computer games like you brought up, they're buying the computer games for us. But you assume that you should be rich. No, it's not an assumption. It's, it's what I want. It's not an assumption or an entitlement. It's what I'm hoping to work for for myself. 
Now, yeah. I'm not going to try to make anybody feel that they want it. Now, they asked, I was asked a question, do I want to be rich and famous? Ask me the question, do I want to be broke and unknown? And the answer is no. Yeah. <laughs> um. Are you currently broke and unknown? Unknown, no, broke, yes. <laughs> okay. All right. Is he making sense to you? Um, well, I feel like, you know, I think our generation also has a problem with what success is and what contentment is. And um, it's kind of told a lot, if you are famous and if you're rich, you're going to be content. And you're always reaching for that next job or that next thing that's going to make you happy, that next fix. When a lot of people my age, I'm 23, a lot of people have forgotten what contentment is and what happiness can be. And, you know, and sometimes you do have to work and you do have to move locations. Um, I'm very happy with what I do and I don't have a big famous job. Um, but I did get off my rear end from Ohio and move here even though I didn't want to, but I knew this is the place that I had to go in order to do what I want to do, in order to be content. What is it you want to do? Um, I'm a professional singer. Uh-huh. And um, so, you know... What kind of singing do you do? Um, a lot, but I like a lot of pop country. Yeah? Yeah. Like, give me a couple of bars of something pop country. Okay, uh... And I dug my key into the yeah. side of his pretty little souped-up four-wheel drive. All right. That was okay. <laughs> you want to sing off? No, that's good. No, uh, no, hell no. <laughs> you don't want to sing with me. But, uh, you know, it, it, we've decided it's about money. And let me tell you, I've been way poor, and I've been way not poor. And i got to say, I've been happy the whole time. Don't you think we were happy when we didn't have any money? Oh, yes, I think so. I mean, seriously. Yes. When Robin and I got married, she was working at the airport. <laughs> yes, I was. She was the Unicom operator on the radio, given the weather. <laughs> and uh, landing instructions. Landing instructions. Yes. Yeah. The and and we lived in a, what was our rent? Like 110 bucks? It was $118. $118. Yes. One bedroom apartment. Yeah. But we were happy Horrible. as pigs in the mud. We loved it. Yeah. We loved it. Yeah. So I mean, I don't think it I don't think you back. get happy with money. I don't think it precludes being happy at all. I mean, I've been happy in crummy places and happy and not crummy places. I prefer not crummy places. Uh, but you don't have to have it. So, Jean, what do you think about these trophies for every kid that shows up? So giving a trophy just for showing up is obviously not a very good life lesson because that's not how life works. Uh, and it teaches that inflated sense of self that's called entitlement or narcissism that um, you really don't have to do a whole lot and everybody will, will think you're great. The other thing I really hear uh, from some of the, the young folks is that the most common myth I hear is we have to be self-centered and entitled to succeed. However, that's not true. Uh, people who are entitled actually in the end end up less successful. They can't judge their own abilities. They have this inflated sense of self and they don't get along well with other people. And in the end, nobody likes a jerk, so they fail. Now, I just blogged about this generation on my website. It's easy to get there. Just log on to drphil.com, and then you can find the link uh, to my blog. And one, one of the viewers had this to say. As a baby boomer college professor, I felt completely disconnected from my students. They're used to receiving comments like, you're a rock star when they barely pass. Many of them don't perform well when they get to the workplace. They seem to be lacking inner drive and discipline, just waiting for everything to be handed to them. And I, that pretty much typified what I, I think is going on. If everybody gets rewarded for virtually anything, and you know, I saw it when I went to play football in college. Uh, you know, when you're in high school and you're like all district and all state and everything, you walk around like, boy, I got it going on. You go to the next level, everybody's all district, everybody was all state, and all of a sudden, you're just a face in the crowd and you gotta start all over again. That's what happens when you go from being a rock star to your parents to being the third kid from the left in the job interview. And all I'm saying is you gotta get your kids ready to distinguish themselves when they're the third from the left in row 14. We'll be right back.
you heard what I said on the show, but to find out what I said after the show, visit DrPhil.com and click on Dr. Phil Uncensored. Well, we've been talking about the entitled generation today, and Jean Twangy says it well in her book, Generation Me. Your kids are special to you, but they need to learn that they have to earn being special in the world by their performance and holding themselves accountable. I want to thank all of my guests today. I also want to thank MTV correspondent Kim Stoltz uh, for being here. Thanks for weighing in on all of this. Thank you. So you're a hard working Jen Meer for sure. Uh, the entire audience is going to go home with a copy of Generation Me today. So we'll give you that. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks so much. what I said on the show, but to find out what I said after the show, visit DrPhil.com and click on Dr. Phil Uncensored. Well, we've been talking about the entitled generation today, and Jean Twangy says it well in her book, Generation Me. Your kids are special to you, but they need to learn that they have to earn being special in the world by their performance and holding themselves accountable. I want to thank all of my guests today. I also want to thank MTV correspondent Kim Stoltz uh, for being here. Thanks for weighing in on all of this. Thank you. So you're a hard working Jen Meer for sure. Uh, the entire audience is going to go home with a copy of Generation Me today. So we'll give you that. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks so much. Thanks, guys.